Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Shushan Hosepian, a pediatric oncologist, and I am honored to host today's discussion with our distinguished guest, Chris Burns, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Amplia Therapeutics Limited. Chris has led Amplia through transformative developments in oncology and drug discovery, and today we have the privilege of gaining insights from his journey and leadership. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Oh, thank you, Shushan. Looking forward to the discussion. Uh, so to start with, I would like to start from the very beginning. Uh, can you share your journey to becoming the CEO of Amplia Therapeutics? Hopefully you let it that bit out. Um, yeah, my, I started my um, uh, career uh, in drug discovery and development um, at Pfizer in the UK. So I did a PhD in chemistry in Australia, postdoc in the US, um, and was able to get a job um, doing um, medicinal chemistry at uh, Pfizer in Sandwich in the UK. Um, after uh, five years in the UK, I moved back to Australia and started working um, uh, in an academic role and then moved, transitioned to a biotech company there. And then from that time on, I've been working extensively in biotech companies in Australia um, you know, for the last 20 uh, or so years. Uh, I ended up being CEO of Amplia Therapeutics about 10 years ago. I was uh, became aware of some assets that have been developed by an Australian um, drug discovery uh, team and wanted to take those drugs into the clinic because I thought they were good quality assets and uh, helped found the company. From that time, moved on to the board and then a few years ago stepped into the CEO uh, role. Uh, that's really inspiring, path. And you mentioned about the drug discovery uh, background. How that background influenced your leadership? I think, um, you know, starting off in uh, a career in large pharma uh, was a great background in in leadership. Uh, Pfizer's, uh, you know, such a such a big company, a fabulous company to work for. Um, and when I was there in the in the nineties, it was going through a really meteoric growth there were um really wonderful people to work with really smart people dedicated um and that really set a blueprint for me uh, that what we're doing in drug discovery and development is important work and you focus hard on that and you you do the best possible science and the best possible work to drive quickly through to a decision um and you keep on doing that process ultimately to you, to you get to a drug that you take into the clinic and then you um, use those same processes to do your clinical study. So I think, I think that, that, um, that sort of training and that background really has informed uh, how I've always tackled, uh, you know, the research I've been involved with and, and the studies I've, I've been involved with. Do the best possible science and always driving towards ultimately taking a drug into the clinic and uh, hopefully uh, um, helping um, patients uh, treat a particular disease. Uh, it's very interesting how the hands-on scientific experience can shape strategic thinking in leadership. And to continue, what's been the most rewarding part of your role as CEO at Amplia Therapeutics? Yeah, so I'd say the most rewarding um aspect of what we do at Amplia is when we see uh, patients have a good response to our drug. So we have a drug in development at the moment for pancreatic cancer. We give our drug in combination with standard of care chemotherapy. And we can look at how patients are responding to that combination of our drug and the standard of care chemo uh, versus what we know about the chemotherapy alone. Uh, and when we see patients do well on the drug, um, better than what you would anticipate with with chemotherapy alone, that's that's extremely rewarding. That's what we're in this business for. Ultimately, is to develop drugs that improve patient outcomes. And and when you see that, that's that's hugely rewarding. So that's that's they're the highs. Uh, absolutely, of what we do. That's really wonderful. And can you tell us more about Amplia Therapeutics mission? Yeah, so, so our mission is to uh, develop drugs for the treatment of cancer and serious fibrotic disease. That's, that's what we want to do. That's 
how the company was started, uh, developing these these particular assets, uh, small molecule inhibitors of of focal adhesion kinase. Um, and what we want to do is build build the company to to explore um, the opportunities with our current assets and actually ultimately in license uh, other drugs that actually potentially work by different mechanisms, but still are addressing these areas of unmet need in oncology and fibrotic disease. Um, so um, in, that's, that's our mission. We're very focused at the moment on progressing our lead asset, Nalmafotinib, a highly selective best-in-class FAC inhibitor. Um, and we want to continue um, pushing that forward and uh, building the company so that we can, we can do it again with, with additional assets. That's uh, really fascinating. And looking ahead, what do you want Ampia Therapeutics uh, legacy to be in the healthcare and cancer treatment field? Look, the, uh, the legacy would be ultimately to have have our, uh, our drugs and particularly our lead asset at the moment uh, approved and used uh, widely in the clinic to uh, amplify, which is why the, the company is called Ampliate Therapeutics, to amplify the effect of existing uh, and new treatments in, in oncology. So by virtue of the way the drug works, it breaks down fibrotic tissue. It allows uh, the immune system to attack solid tumors in a better way. It allows drugs and, and, and antibodies to permeate into the, the, uh, the tumor tissue better. Um, you know, we think the drug has broad applicability in a range of solid tumors. Our current focus is very much in pancreatic cancer, uh, metastatic pancreatic cancer um, in particular. So we're, we're looking at improving um, treatment in a disease that really has pretty poor outcomes for patients. You know, the five-year survival for pancreatic cancer patients is 13%, and that's looking across all pancreatic cancer patients. If we look at patients who have metastatic disease, the five-year survival is 3%. So there's really a significant need to improve um, treatment options for patients. So the, the, the legacy would be that, that our drug can be used as part of the treatment uh, uh, regime or regimes, because I think, I think we'll get to a point where pancreatic cancer is treated in, in second line, third line and beyond um, with a range of different, different uh, medications. But to see that uh, nalmafotinib and our FAC inhibitors would be uh, um, a cornerstone of, of that treatment, I, I think that would be a, a wonderful legacy. Um, and once we've demonstrated, uh, further demonstrated activity in pancreatic cancer, we'd, we'd um, you know, want to look at other solid tumours as well uh, that we know are fibrotic. Uh, things like uh, certain ovarian cancers, head and neck cancer, gastric cancer, and so on and so forth. We think there's real potential for for FAC inhibitors in in this sort of indication. So that's that's very much focusing on the oncology aspect. That's where our interests lie at the moment, and that's where we want to see the drug um, uh, be developed first up. But we think there's opportunities for for our FAC inhibitors outside of oncology in in serious fibrotic diseases like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, for instance, you know, we've got clinical data in that space and we know it's a very cha challenging area clinically. Um, and, and while there are some drugs approved, there's been a lot of drugs that have gone into the clinic and haven't, haven't uh, sort of um, demonstrated uh, efficacy in later stage trials um, despite early promise. So so, um, you know, we, we know that's still an area where there's still a lot of unmet need and, and we think we can, we can help in, in diseases like IPS as well. Uh, that's a very powerful vision, actually. And uh, now I would like to switch the gears into more uh, personal questions. What is the toughest decision you have had to make as a leader and how did you handle it? Yeah, I think this is, this is a really interesting question. Um, and thank you for sending the questions in advance because I was able to think on this. I think the toughest decision I've ever had to make as a leader, and, and I'm sure a lot of people who've, who've led teams will feel the same way, is having to let people go. When the company changes direction, when funding is tight, when uh, you know programs might have failed and, and you have to downsize, you know, letting people go is a really challenging, challenging thing. 
um, because, you know, this is people's livelihood. This is something that people are heavily invested in the success of. And, and not only that, the people you've, you've, um, oftentimes uh, built strong relationships with, um, uh, working together on a particular project can really be build really, really great relationships. And so that, um, is a really challenging thing. I've lost many nights of sleep, uh, on occasion when I've had to do, to go through this process. Um, and I think, you know, what I've learned from that is to, um, go through that process in a very open, uh, frank manner, not to, n- not to, uh, um, you know, not to dwell on on uh, on on the negatives uh, of it, but to actually be mindful that this is someone's livelihood, and um, to help people in that in that transition, and to be frank and and candid, and and hopefully uh, respectful um, through that process. So I think um, it is a really challenging thing to do. It's the hardest hardest part of of being a leader, um, I, I would suggest, but. Um, it's sometimes it's uh, it's a critical part of actually uh, driving a project forward. Yeah, it's uh, one thing to be a scientist, and a uh, completely different thing to be a scientist and also a leader. So it's very difficult. Um, now, what personal values do you think have helped Amtea Therapeutics to succeed? Uh, that's an interesting uh, question. So, so I think, um, bit being honest uh, and being willing to roll up your sleeves and actually get involved i think they're 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 things where we're a small team um i expect you know everyone in the team and and thankfully everyone in the team does this every everyone's willing to pitch in when something needs to be done even if it's not directly in their particular skill set i i I think that that sort of approach is how i tackle um you know leadership and 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 how I tackle the job, uh, uh, and I, I think that that is reflected in 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 the rest of the team. You know that, that you're actually uh, when something needs to be done, you you get it done. You put your head down, um, even if it mightn't be exactly your skill set. You you do that, and uh, and so you can move on to the next thing. Yeah, that's a wonderful answer. And uh, finally, what books would you recommend that had a huge influence on you? on your career yeah this is an interesting question um and and so I, I thought there was two books i wanted to mention so the first uh is a book by julian barnes the history of the world in ten and a half chapters one of my favorite books um and i'm very happy to say i have a signed copy uh by the author um so for, for me the, um that book you know it, it, it's it's a beautiful book um it it breaks down um, a number of points in history um, and there's a clarity to Julian Barnes's writing that I really love. It's not, there's never any self-deception um, in, in the discussion. It's always very clear um, way he thinks. And I think that, that kind of clarity of thought is something that, that, I, that I really hold on to um, and I, um, I see that in a lot of his writing. Uh, and the other book I wanted to, um, to comment on is a book by Paul Oster, the American writer who passed away last year, um, a book of his called Baumgartner, which is um, uh, it might have been his last novel, I'm not entirely sure, um, a really beautiful book about, about love and, and loss. And um, again, there's a, there's a clarity um, and a lack of self-deception in that um, that I really, really like. Um, and, and I think, you know, when you're a scientist and when you're doing drug discovery, you need to be an optimist and you're always trying to, to see the best in the data. But at a certain point, you also have to stand back from it and, and say, well, is this data really believable to somebody who, who's not invested in it? Um, and so, so those two books, to me, they're, they're obviously about a lot more than, than what I'm just focusing on. But that kind of, concept of not um allowing yourself to be deceived by what you want to believe but actually what really is happening i think uh, um are, are features that that i really love about those two novels 
Yeah, thank you so much for the recommendations and uh, thank you for sharing your insights and expertise with us today. Your journey and the work of Amphia Therapeutics are truly inspiring and I wish you good luck and looking forward to hear more advancements. Uh, thank you so much again for uh, being with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Shoshana. Much appreciated. All the best. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.